So in this video, I'm going to do as best as I can to explain the process as clearly as possible. But I can tell you, essentially, painting in layers is the most important thing you need to learn. And in my opinion, it's the easiest process to create beautiful, realistic portraits in acrylic paint and oil paint without sacrificing your unique style. Okay, so let's dive in. So have you ever seen this video of the artist Lillian Lee painting lifelike 3D aquariums with paint cast in resin? So what she's doing is painting a layer of a fish, letting it dry, pouring a layer of clear resin on top, letting it dry, and painting another layer of the fish. So after several layers of resin and paint, the fish appears to look three-dimensional. Yet, she's creating an optical illusion of form, since it's not actually 3D, but the fish does look like it is swimming in different depths. And another amazing thing is that it also appears to have that softness, like kind of that blurry effect that we can see in nature. And we're gonna talk more about this in a little bit, but let's get back to the movie The Wizard of Oz. Let's imagine that we pause the movie on one of the scenes without color. If I were to paint this image, we would call this a monochromatic painting. Monochromatic means one color. The color that we see in The Wizard of Oz is not necessarily black and white, but more of a brown or umber color. So if I were to paint the scene, I would use one color of paint, like perhaps a burnt umber, and then add varying degrees of white or black to make it lighter or darker. When we lighten or darken a color, we call this value. And you're gonna hear me say this word a lot in this course. So just to reemphasize this, value means the lightness or darkness of one color. I don't wanna go too off topic, but I know a lot of students have asked after I talk about value and say, well, what about changing the lightness or darkness by adding another color, like perhaps adding blue to red? Yeah, that would certainly darken the red color, but it would also change the color or hue to a completely new color. If we wanted to lighten or darken a color without changing its hue, then we would add black and white. So again, if I were to paint this monochromatic painting, I would mix up one color, the burnt umber, on my paint palette to have varying degrees of lightness and darkness. I would then only have to figure out where to put the darkest value colors, also known as shadows, the middle colored values, also known as midtones, and my lightest values, also known as highlights. Does this seem easier or harder than trying to figure out how to paint this? If I wanted to make this process even easier on myself, I would first paint the entire background in a midtone color, because then all I would have to figure out then is where my shadows and my highlights would need to go. So I have already painted three layers. The first would be a single layer of midtone color, the second would be my shadows, and the third would be my highlights. Now I am saying layers because when I imply that there are layers of paint, I am implying that each of the paint layers has dried before adding paint on top. So similar to making a layer cake, you bake each of the layers of the cakes first before you stack them on top of each other. Otherwise you would just get a single layer of cake. <laughs> So returning to the question, how did master Renaissance artists make their paintings look so good and natural? Well, the answer is master artists did not paint in one layer. They built up their layers. And the way that I'm going to be teaching you how to paint realistic portraits is the same way that master painters of the past created realism. And that is by starting with a monochromatic underpainting. This technique was used by innumerous painters like Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael, and was also a technique widely taught and used to mimic the look of classical sculptures in the wall and ceiling decorations. It made it look as though the sculptures were coming off the walls and the ceilings without having to hire a stone worker or a sculptor. Painting a monochromatic underpainting is the basis of realism because it accomplishes these three major things. Number one, it forces you to think only in terms of light and shadow without having to worry about color at all. Number two, by creating an underpainting, you can achieve an even distribution of light and shadow across your entire painting. And this means the foreground, middle ground, and background. It's just gonna have a more realistic overall image. Number three, your underpainting acts as a foundation for the painting as a whole, because the color that we will add on top are gonna be thin, transparent layers of glaze. So this means that once you finish your underpainting, you're gonna have a pretty good idea of how the final product will look. This leads me to the next layer of our painting process, and that is the glazes. But what are glazes? A glaze is a thin, transparent layer of paint that is applied on top of an already dried painting. Glazes are built up in layers in order to create more depth and realism. And because each glaze is transparent, the colors underneath will shine through and affect the final color of the glaze. So are you confused yet? 
Let's go back to Lillian Lee's fish. Lillian was able to create realism in her work by physically separating each layer of paint with a resin epoxy. The slight separation between each layer of paint allows light to bounce off the painting in a way that creates dimension. When we look at Lillian's fish, we can see the different colors because the light is reflecting off the painting in different ways, based on how deep or how shallow each layer of paint is. The colors of each layer of paint are also affected by the colors of layers below it. Lillian Lee's work makes use of the optical illusion stereopsis, or binocular vision. This is when each eye receives a different image because they are in slightly different positions on one's head, meaning that we are able to perceive depth perception. When creating a 3D resin painting as Lillian does, or when we paint using a layered process like we are using and the masters used, we are essentially tricking our brains into seeing something that doesn't physically exist in real life. Yet, we will not have to repaint our painting every single time we add a new layer of glaze. Most of our work will already be done because of our underpainting. The glazes we will be using will be transparent with just slight tints of color. So let me give you an example. So let's pretend we finished painting our monochromatic underpainting of this Wizard of Oz scene, and now we want to transform it into a world of color. After this monochromatic painting has dried, we will begin to add our first layer of colored glaze. The key is to be patient enough to let every layer of glaze dry in between applications, and this way you can see the colors of the layers below it, achieving a similar effect that Lillian does with the stereopsis illusion. So I know it may seem like a lot, but don't worry if you're not fully grasping it yet. We're only at the very beginning, and this is only an introduction. We're going to be covering all of this more in depth as we move forward, but for now, understanding the basics of layering is the most important thing. Because when you progress through the lessons, each one is going to help you fit another puzzle piece into the puzzle of how the painting process works together.